everybody. I'm Chef Jen, welcome. Hope you've been having a great day, enjoying all the food, wine, and beer. I, I did, for sure. Um, I'm gonna be making my carrot cake for you guys today. And I have been working on this recipe for many years to make sure it's like the moistest, most delicious carrot cake on the planet, I hope. Um, this is the final demonstration right here, but I'll show you guys how to um, make the cake first. So um, in my mixer right here, I already have uh, eight eggs. And then we're gonna add applesauce, which is one of my secret ingredients to the carrot cake. Um, I actually took out um, about a cup and a half of the oil that is normally in a carrot cake and added the applesauce. And I mean, you can tell your friends that it's kind of a diet carrot cake because it doesn't have the oil in it, but really it just makes it really moist and delicious. So we're gonna put the uh, applesauce right into here. And then next, we're gonna add the, um, this is the oil and a little bit of vanilla. Then I have two cups of brown sugar and two cups of white sugar. And that's another thing that I changed on this. A lot of people just use the white sugar, but I feel if you use the brown sugar, you get like that deeper caramel flavor when you're making the cake. And it actually adds uh, just a little bit, and you know, an extra layer of flavoring. All right. I'm hoping you guys can all see this. So, uh, We're gonna mix this up, and you wanna mix it for a couple minutes so it gets light and fluffy, and you make sure all the eggs are mixed and everything's incorporated. And then the next thing that we are going to add is uh, four cups of flour. And I like to sift this, and then I also like to sift uh, the baking powder, baking soda, cinnamon, and nutmeg with it as well. And especially the baking powder and baking soda, because you know if you have it in your cabinet for a little too long, it gets a little crusty. And the last thing you want to do when you're eating a carrot cake is take a nice bite of baking soda. That's, that's never good for <laughs> any desserts. Well, maybe I should have gotten a little bit bigger bowl, but this, we'll make it happen. And then again, I mean, this is just... You know, people have the fancy sifters that you turn and everything, but I think this is a little bit easier. And then one of the things I like to do um, is make sure I mix this really well. That way when you actually add it to your wet ingredients, you don't have to mix it too long, and then you can really ensure that you have a moist cake. That'll be for the next step over there. So you can see here, it's turning a little bit of a pale yellow, and that's what you're looking for. Oh, and that looks pretty good. And one way to test, if you just wanna take your whisk out and pull it out and everything runs off the whisk and you still don't have eggs that are combined, then you are ready to go. And I know it seems like a lot, but you can add it all into your little mixer. And don't worry about making a mess. I, I do it all the time. <laughs> All right, so for this, the most important thing is to start on slow, because if you turn this on high, we are gonna have flour and all those spices everywhere. Like I just did right then. I just grab a towel from over here. So while I'm waiting for this to mix, I'm gonna get um, my two pans ready. I really think that the um, swing form pans are the easiest way to go. But the big 
big tip here is to make sure you spray your pans really well, especially on the outside. So it releases. And then to make sure that you can get your pan out of these, I like to use a little bit of parchment paper. And just, I'll just make a little round that fits these uh, cake pans. And I'm actually using uh, nine inch cake pans right here. But this batter, as you'll see later, you're actually gonna taste it in cupcake form. And so you can use the same batter to make cupcakes or smaller cakes or mini cupcakes, whatever you want. And so I just put the pan right on here and with your Sharpie or a pen, whatever you got handy. Cut out the little circle, but um, draw the circle, but then when you cut it out, you wanna go actually inside of this so it fits in the pan. And if you guys have any questions or anything with what I'm doing, you can shout out questions or raise your hand. I can kind of see you guys back there <laughs> over all the bright lights. Before I put that in there, another really important step is to make sure that you scrape the sides and the bottom because you don't want like the flour and everything to be stuck in the bottom. And again, you would have clumps in your cake, which is never what you're trying to do. But I don't know if you can see this color here that we're showing right now. And this is, this is what you're looking for. All right, that looks pretty good. And then, um, you know, I've already sprayed my pans, but then you put the parchment paper down and you wanna spray that again so it doesn't stick to the bottom of your cake when you take it out. And with certain cakes where you use butter, I like to butter the pans with butter, but this already has the oil in it and it's, it's a little easier. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is add six cups of grated carrots. And I can just, and when you do this, these last two steps, you don't wanna overmix, because if you overmix, you kinda just wanna do it till it's just incorporated. The beating of the eggs, you can cook, do that for a little bit, but when actually, once you add everything else, try and mix it as little as possible so you get the moistest cake that you can get. So once it's incorporated a little bit, not to overmix, I like to take the pan out and do the rest by hand. Oh, there we go. So I need to get the carrots all incorporated and then I will add the pecans. Uh, you know, people ask me if I put golden raisins or stuff like that and I don't, but if you want to, you can. But I, I've done it with walnuts and all different sorts of nuts and I really feel like the pecans are the way to go and you don't want to toast them because if you toast them first and then put them in the cake, they get overcooked and they get bitter. So don't toast them, you can just throw them right in. And then you should have an oven preheated at 325 degrees. Um, that way, because this is, lots of cakes cook at higher temperatures, but this is a really thick batter with a lot of, of it in it. And so you want to cook it at that lower temperature to cook it a little bit longer. Um, so that you can you continue to keep that moist flavor in your cake. All right, then I am going to pour it into my prepared pans. Uh, 
and try and keep it as even as possible. All right. And then to actually cook the cake, I mean, cooking times are just a suggestion. They're pretty close, but everyone's oven is different. Everyone's oven, if you cook a lot or not, you can kind of tell that there's hot spots and not hot spots. So these usually cook for about 30 minutes. So I'll set the timer for 15 minutes. And yeah. Oh, I thought you were raised your hand, sorry. Um, I, I set the timer for 15 minutes, and then I like to not just switch sides in the oven, but make sure you rotate the pans 50% as well so you get the even baking. And so now we're gonna use the magic of television TV, even though we're not on TV right now. But so I'm gonna put these in at 325 and cook them for about 30 minutes. And then when the cakes are ready, let me see where I put those, here we go. That would be what you're looking for, a nice dark and brown. And um, there's, two, <laughs> there's two ways to tell if a cake is ready. There's one is the toothpick me method, which it works kind of good, but sometimes if it's a moist cake, it's hard to tell if they're really clean or not. So I found the best way to figure out if your cake is done is to touch it in the middle when it's still in the oven. And if the indentation doesn't come back up, it needs a little bit longer. But if you touch it and it springs right back up, you're perfect and ready to go. So magic of television, these are perfect and ready to go. And then you can see with the spray and everything like how easy it is to um, take the cakes right out of the pans. And running out about a little bit of room there. And then you can see, I mean, they literally just pop right off. Don't forget to take the parchment off because <laughs> no one wants to eat paper when you're having a delicious piece of cake. And then I personally cheat a little bit when I cut my cakes. You can put them on a cake turner and try and cut it, cut it with a knife. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to do that. It's really hard to get it completely even and flat. So you can get one of these little things on Amazon or Michaels or whatever. It's called a cake cutter and it has these little feet. So you keep them on the bottom and it will cut your cake perfectly. So you can see right here, we're gonna do this one. I found for me that is much easier than trying to do it on a turntable and make sure it is perfect. So you can see right here, cut great, and you can see how easy it was to cut. I'm actually gonna put these on these cake grounds over here. And these little cake rounds too, you can get on Amazon or Michaels or anything like that. And um, they really help with making sure the cake is easily transferable and easily, easily get um, the frosting on it and you know, not mess up whatever nice um, pan you actually wanna put it on. I, I kind of feel like this is the best invention that I've ever used. <laughs> All right. And, and the best part of being the cook at home, you get to try all the cake and make sure it tastes good while you're doing the rest of the decoration. Huh? 
You can come up and grab the bowl if you want, Jared. No problem. Do it. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> well, I mean, when I when I do this uh, in the kitchen, my staff, like, this is kind of their favorite part. They get so excited when I make carrot cake because they might not get a slice of it, but they at least get this deliciousness on top. I did not say to throw it away. I said, this is, this is what the cook gets to eat. Well, no, I mean, because you can see that's a double layer cake there. So you really want the layers flat. Because if not, it's, it's really hard to, you, I mean, you can a little bit if you're not perfect, but it's really hard to manipulate the cream cheese frosting to make sure it's completely flat and flat on the top. And, you know, if not, it's easier to work with a flatter surface and the one that's domed to actually decorate it. So I'm just gonna leave these here for a second and show you guys how to make the cream cheese frosting. So we'll move over here to this side. And in here I have um, a pound of cream cheese and a pound of butter. And you definitely wanna break it up into smaller pieces and let it get to room temperature because if you don't let it get to room temperature, it's really hard to get a smooth frosting with no lumps and that kind of stuff in it. So we're gonna start that. And then again, more sifting, but really with the powdered sugar, as you all know, sometimes powdered sugar is really nice and sometimes it has the clumps. And if you have the clumps, there's no way to get out the clumps with the powdered sugar into the frosting as well. So let me, oh, there you go. And also with this, with powdered sugar, it clumps really easily. So I like to sift it at the last second right before I put it in to make sure that none of those clumps form back out. I mean, here in California, it's a little easier because we have, you know, super dry weather. But if you live anywhere that's humid, it's really important to do this at the very last second. I'm almost done with that. I let this go for a little bit, but um, again, I wanna scrape and make sure that all the butter and cream cheese is fully mixed together. So every bite of the frosting is delicious. There we go. I do have to say the fans in here are not helping the, the sifting part of this, but whatever, it's part of the fun. And when it gets down to the end where it's like the clumps, I just use my fingers to make sure you get all the clumps out. All right, and so now you can see this and, you know, just make sure you take a look at it. And, you know, if you wanna make sure there's no clumps, you can take a little spoon and make sure there isn't. And I know this looks like a lot to fix in this, fit in this mixer. And this is a home mixer, this isn't a professional one. So this would be probably, if you have a stand-up mixer, the size you have at home. And if you don't have one of these, you can definitely do the old school with the, you know, the two little beaters and do it that way, it's just a little bit more work. And I know this looks like a lot, but you actually wanna add it all at the same time and it will, it will fit. I mean, know this seems like a lot of sugar, but if you buy that store-bought stuff, it even has more sugar in it. All right, and again, just like over there, once you add the flour, do not turn this on high. <laughs> See, even low, just because it's windy, it's perfect. So when you're decorating the cake, you wanna do it in two steps. There is what we like to call the crumb layer. And so I'll show you how to do that right now with those cakes over there. 
Um, you definitely want to get a good um, layer in the middle, but on the outside, you want to do it as thin as humanly possible because then you're going to do another layer with the thicker uh, part of the frosting so that you don't see the cake or any of the nuts and you don't get crumbs in your frosting so you have a nice, beautiful white frosting. There we go. So when it gets to this age and it's almost completely uh, incorporated, that's when I add my pinch of salt. And I know it sounds a little weird to put salt in desserts and especially frosting, but I mean, what do we use salt for? We use it to add flavor. So it makes sense if you're gonna put it on your steak. I mean, I wouldn't put as much on my in my frosting that I do on my steak, but it does give it that little extra bit of flavor. And then this is just uh, the vanilla extract. And once I add all of that, I, I do the scrape down again. And you can see here you get um, powdered sugar here on the sides and it's really important to make sure you get all that powdered sugar down from the sides so it gets all incorporated and you don't have any clumps of powdered sugar. And I also really try and make sure that I get the bottom. I don't know if you guys have ever used a mixer before, but you always get clumps on the very bottom. So it's really important to to scrape all the way down at the bottom so your frosting is good to go. And don't mind me using my fingers here. All right. And once it's all incorporated, the last little bit I like to do it on high to make sure it's perfect. And I do have to say that if, if it is really hot in your kitchen or really hot, you really have to watch this closely or it will start to separate and break just because, you know, if butter gets too hot, it separates. So be careful with that. If you got a nice cold kitchen, you don't have to worry about it. And so this is another one of my favorite little tricks is a cake turner. It really makes your life so much easier. Um, so the biggest thing is to make sure you put a little bit of tape on the bottom so that your cake round does not move around while you are trying to decorate your cake. And with this one, you can see it's a pretty hefty cake. I like to put um, two layers of this so that when you go to pick it up later, you don't have bent cardboard after all that hard work you've done to make a delicious cake. All righty. There we go. And if at a home or wherever you're cooking, if your frosting gets a little warm, um, you can just put it in the fridge. You don't even have to cover it or anything. You can put it in the fridge for, you know, maybe five or 10 minutes for it to harden up a little bit. You don't want it too hard because then it's um, hard to mix. But if you let it get a little hard and then just give it a good stir with your spoon, it will make your life a lot easier. And so we are gonna grab our cakes that have been cut. I'm going to put this here. And one of the biggest tricks I found when you are actually making this layer in the middle of your cake, it's, and if you actually put your cake in the fridge for a little bit, it's a little bit easier too. The crumbs don't mix, don't fall around. I mean, you can put it in the fridge uncovered for about 20 minutes or so after it's cooled down completely. And then you, you get less of the crumb, but we'll see how we do here. But um, one of the biggest tricks for doing the center is I, I see a lot of people that just do this and start moving it and you can see all the crumbs go around. So that's actually, I mean, you can do it that way, but if you wanna make it really nice, I like to take a spoon and actually put it on first. And obviously we're gonna mix, 
we're going to um, smooth it out later so you don't have to worry about this being perfect. But it does help that, you know, when you cut in the cake and you get that metal layer in the cake, you don't get all the crumbs and pecans and all the other fun stuff. Like, you actually get a, a nice layer with none of the crumb mixed in. So we'll start with that. And see, now it's really easy to spread it out without having, like, See, we didn't mess up the cake at all, and you can see right there, no crumbs, nothing. So obviously the middle layer, you, you want to do about a centimeter thick or so. And then this next layer we call the crumb layer, and you want to do it super thin, but you want to make sure you cover the entire cake. And this one, since you do it so thin, you don't really have to worry so much on the top about putting a big layer on the top to begin with. And I try and go as thin as possible because the next layer you do thicker to cover up, like you can see the little bits of cake and that kind of stuff. I find it easier to use one of these on the side, but I know a lot of people that like to use a bench scraper. And I mean, it's whatever is most comfortable for you. But then you can see again, I'm trying to go as thin as possible. And I can see here that I'm starting to get pieces of this cake in the frosting that I'm going to use for the next layer. So if you just want to put it in another bowl, that way you are not mixing the crumbs. It's always a good, uh, an extra good little trick. Did you guys already try the carrot cake? Thank you. So this is it. That's, that's about it. You just want to make sure it is, everything is covered so there's no crumbs showing. And then as you can see, my frosting's um, really spreadable and movable. So if I went to put the next layer on here, right now it wouldn't work. I would just get more crumbs everywhere. So once you get the crumb layer on, then you're gonna wanna put it in the fridge just so it hardens up a little bit, maybe 15, 20 minutes, just depending on how cold your fridge is and blah, 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 blah. So that is the first step. And then again, magic of television. <laughs> it has been a little warm today, so hopefully this is thick it up, but this would be your cake that you take out of the fridge to do the next step. And I'm actually gonna put a piece of parchment down because I don't know about you guys, the worst thing about cooking in a kitchen is cleaning, at least that is for me. <laughs> so I like to put this down. Perfect. Whew. I like to put this down because you'll see the, the next layer is going to get even a little bit messier. So now we are going to do the actual layer. And on this one, I mean, the cream cheese frosting is kind of one of the best parts of the carrot cake. So I, I don't go shy. Like to do a good layer here. And I mean, I, I have friends that are professional cake makers and bakers. And um, I am not that perfect. So I have to say my biggest trick, I can usually get the top to look really nice, but then once I try and do the sides, it's a lot harder. So I have a couple little tricks. For the carrot cake, I just pulverize pecans. Again, not cooked or anything. So you can see here, that will take care of any of my imperfections on the side. And if I do like, say if I do a red velvet cake, I will actually take that crumb top that you don't want to get rid of and I will bake it in the oven and get it a little crispy and pulverize it up and put that on the side of the cakes to help with 
it looking perfect. So I've been told I got a couple minutes left, so let's do this really quick. You guys have any questions or anything while I'm doing this last little bit? I, I guess that means I was a good teacher. <laughs> And so you can see this one thing of frosting will is almost perfect to do uh, one cake. So I've got the outside done, and so then I just do a quick run around the outside. And then I go back and fix the top. And you just kind of want to keep it flat and turn and pray that it comes out as smooth as possible. So that did pretty, did pretty good there on that one. And this is why I like to have the parchment paper is to do the um, pecans on the side. And you just use your hands and you can even go up to the edges. So if like your edge isn't that perfect, you just kind of cover it up. And one of the reasons I like to put the parchment down is like now I have all this extra here I'll just put it right down there on the side and keep going. So you can get the idea. And then after you do this, you do want to put it in the fridge for a little bit too, just to harden it up so that when you actually cut it, you don't get a big mess. And um, one of the biggest things when you're cutting a cake with frosting like this is that every single time you cut it, you wanna wipe off your knife because it has the nuts and everything on it. So if you make your first cut, it has nuts and everything on it. And then when you cut the next slice, you get nuts on the top of it and, um, you know, still delicious. It just doesn't look quite as pretty. <laughs> That's it. Can I finish this? Are we done? Perfect. And as you can kind of see when I'm putting it on, you, you kind of want to smush it in there so that it stays and you can always take the extra off later. And you can also see if you were doing this on your kitchen counter at home, you would want the piece of parchment. <laughs> it's much easier clean up at the end. Let's see here, almost done. And then you can see I'm kind of squishing it up at the top so that the outside layer, like this one kind of folds over a little bit, but you just cover that up with the nuts. No one will know. And then the last little thing once I'm done is I kind of like to get the bird's eye view and turn it around and make sure you know, like right here, I kind of messed up the frosting. So I'll just throw a little more nuts on there. And there you go. Voila. Thank you. <laughs>